So welcome uh, everyone. Today we'll be taking our uh, second part of listening to your body. And now, so this one is in continuation to what we discussed last time. This is something that each one of us, you know, we experience, we see, we need it. And it is not a question of how deep we want to go into this, uh, what exactly we want. The point here is, do we know first? Are we able to connect to our body or not? Body is talking to us. Sometimes because of various reasons, we are not able to connect. And if we are not able to connect, we miss that opportunity that the body is telling us well ahead in time. So, have we lost the link? That is the question. Why would we not be able to listen to our body? because of the lifestyle, because of so much happening around us that we are not able to focus on our own body means our inner self. Like in meditation, we say connect to your breath or focus on your breath because if you are trying to stay in connection with your inner self or your soul, whichever way we put it. In day-to-day -day lifestyle, we have lots happening around us. You may have stress, you may mm -hmm. have, uh, you know, you may have lost the touch with Panch Bhuta. Panch Bhuta means the five elements we are made of. When we say lifestyle, it includes a lot of things, especially your diet-related things, what you eat, how much you eat, how frequently you eat, at what time you eat all those kind of things and also other than the diet, what time you wake up, what time you sleep, how are you managing your inner self, again, which stress is a part of that. In Ayurveda, we say the most common element is lack of water means the water intake is less. So if anything is wrong, first just take care of the water without worrying about anything bigger. A lot of issues may go away just by having appropriate or optimum amount of water in a day. Average, we say two liters. It could be little up, little down, depending on your age, depending on your condition. Whether we have any physical activity or not, if whole day you are sitting, whether due to work or some other reason, it will impact. It's part of your lifestyle. Now, it doesn't mean we all should go to gym and do heavy lifting, heavy exercises every day. No. but some kind of physical activity certainly should be there every day. Sometimes we find excuses. Oh, today I'm not feeling well, or today is bad weather, or, you know, all kind of issues. Today I have guests, or I have to go somewhere. All these are excuses which, over the period of time, becomes a big issue. So how can we simply stay in touch with ourselves? There is a reason there is so much stress, there is so much value or so much focus given on yoga, on meditation. Pranayam is another thing because it connects you from you within. So it's not just superficial connection, it is connection within. The idea here is that we should live in the moment. And yoga alone can get you that. Pranayama alone can get you there. Or meditation alone. If you combine two or more means all three, it will be even more powerful. But the point is, 
post do we understand and if yes can we follow it it's not easy in today's world but once you try we feel if we do multiple tasking you know we feel proud how oh, i'm doing multitasking that means i'm eating i'm watching or i'm writing or i'm reading whatever the combination may be and we think we are saving time but actually we are going away from ourselves why because we don't know what we ate we don't know where we went we don't know who we talked to we don't know what we talked it's very common you know sometimes you reach office and if somebody says anything you know what happened traffic and all and sometimes we have no idea the body works so mechanically like a clock the whatever your route is it's very uh, very well known so you know you just drive and if you pause if you think you can't recall much because you are not in the moment you are driving but you are thinking you are thinking about the meeting you are thinking about friends family or something else animals are always in touch with panchbhutas we because of our advanced lifestyle so called you know we are getting away we are losing touch with the energy do we really feel can we identify the feeling of energy within us when you come to meditation people say oh you know talk to your body talk to your mind and all but the question is we have this inbuilt capacity but we are losing touch so we have to be mindful of what we do we have to be mindful of things that are because of our action or doesn't matter if it is because of others action but what's happening around you in your environment so we have to stop living by numbers don't be in a mechanical world that yes in the morning by clock i have to do 15 minutes of yoga or 15 minutes of meditation then i'll do this 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 everything is by clock discipline is good don't take me wrong however going by clock is not good that means we are very mechanical we are not applying the mind body connection it's better than not doing it so certainly as a step as a progress is fine but soon we should come out of it because the moment you start listening to your body your body will be giving you indication and then you will stop living by just the numbers what happens when we are not in touch with panch buddha which is so common not only in north america you know uh, pretty much every country everywhere you will see such thing so what happens you live in a house especially in north america there is a close circulation you are in your vehicle or wherever you are traveling to work or otherwise close circulation in the office is close circulation so we are not even in touch with the natural air most of the time of the day hardly for some time you walk you go out and then you are back again because of the weather issues so many times you don't even be yeah like you are not out in the nature so a basic element like air we are not able to take full advantage or we are not in touch so what happens two key factors first you are not getting fresh air like we say stale air inside the house is circulating but it's not fresh if you are heating in winter time because in the furnace it heats now we are changing the natural humidity in the air and it creates some other health issues it's good that air is warm inside the house even outside is minus 20 inside you are plus 20 and you feel comfortable at a cost certainly you are comfortable but at a cost second the way we breathe nowadays has become superficial means you are just in and out in and out in and out we don't do the deep breathing and our lung 
you can kind of divide it into three sections. So when you do in and out, you're not getting the full advantage. You're not getting the optimum level of oxygen from the air in your body. When you do pranayam, intentionally you are slowing down. That means your breathing is much deeper. You may say, I do only 10 minutes of pranayam in 24 hours. Fine. With the practice of 10 minutes every day, slowly and slowly, your breathing will change throughout the day. And that will benefit you. So don't think what does pranayam do and all. It's much deeper impact. Anytime you just sit and observe the way we are breathing, it's just one second in, one second out, or 1.5, or two seconds in, two seconds out, or whatever that ratio may be. But when you are doing pranayam, this ratio is changing means you are breathing in for a longer time, breathing out for a longer time. After air, let's talk about sun. Sun, we know that for our entire solar system, the galaxy, sun is the source of energy. In summer, we don't go out without sunscreen and all kind of protection because we think it will harm us. In winter, you can't go out because of the weather and then you don't get direct sunlight. Sometimes we feel that I'll sit by the window and I will have sunlight. But it is not same. When you are this side of the glass frame of the window, there are certain parts of the sunlight that is reflected back. You don't get the entire spectrum. Nowadays, you know, there are bulb, uh, electric bulbs that you can buy in the market which gives you entire spectrum. Otherwise, usually what you get, they are not good for, like example, you have indoor plants. They need natural sunlight. There are some which can easily live indoor. There are some which needs uh, direct sunlight or sunlight or natural environment. So these kind of special electric bulbs can give you full spectrum and they can survive indoors. Now that's an artificial solution, but in certain cases, if possible, uh, these are some of the you know things one can do Ultimately, the optimum answer is why not be outside? In winter, when you go out, you have gloves, you have like the body hole covered, maybe just, you know, a little bit of face is exposed. Otherwise, pretty much everywhere you are layers and layers of clothing because it's very cold outside. So though you are outside, sunlight is only coming on your maybe face a little bit, eyes are covered with shades or glasses and whatnot. So you see how challenging our lifestyle has become. A simple thing as sunshine has become a tricky subject. Whereas animals, they just roam around in nature. They don't have this issue. Now, last time we talked about water. More than 70% of our body is water, yet we are away from nature when it comes to water. Be it a lake, river, waterfalls, ocean, whatever. How frequently do we really go? Where you live, maybe there's no river, there is no natural waterfall, ocean, or any of the such form. But whenever you get an opportunity, it's really wonderful when you walk bare feet, you know, on the sea beach or beach, uh, any kind of place where you can have the sand and the water bowl. Water is two third of our body, more than two third, right? Because it's 70% plus. So it has huge impact on us. Of course, we get water in our home, but again, it's all processed, chlorine, a lot of other things are there. It is water, but not exactly the same when you talk of nature.
So whenever we get a chance, we should take advantage of getting in the water. Even if you just put your feet in the water, it's very good. Space, again, when you walk, when you go outside, you will get this advantage of being out under the sky. Whether it's night, you know, your sky is full of stars or if even if it is cloudy, you are under the space, ether. So you will get big advantage. And sometimes you are getting multiple, like if you are walking bare feet in the water. You have space, you have air, you have water, you have sun and earth. If you are bare feet and walking, say, on the beach, all five elements at the same time. Now, why earth is so important? See, inside the house, you may have wooden flooring, carpet and all kinds. You are not directly in touch with the earth. And when we go out, we are always wearing some shoes or, you know, some kind of footwear. So you are again not in direct touch. There is a rubber or there is an insulator between you and the Mother Earth. When you go to a park, take off your shoes. Just walk bare feet on the grass. That is when iron exchange takes place. The energy takes exchange takes place between the Earth and your body. It's part of what we say grounding. It's a topic in itself. There are grounding mats. You can use, uh, you know, to sleep on. There are grounding mats. You can use, uh, say, under your laptop where you're working on your desk so that your palm is touching it as you're working. You can use mats like I do, uh, which I put as a, you know, mat under my feet. So I'm not wearing socks or any kind of footwear. If I'm home or working, then my... I'm resting my foot on the mat. So, and that mat is actually attached to the, you know, there is the earthing pin in our electrical outlets. And that's how it is connected to the earth. Scientifically, it's proven at least that, you know, there are ion exchange or basically grounding effect taking place. So these are some of the things, but Panch Bhutas have become such a natural phenomena, which now we have to make a huge effort to you know be in nature but something is better than nothing now we talked about feeling of energy have we have lost the touch of feeling of energy so what can we you know do you may have heard about the chakra meditation what do we do in chakra meditation you are going from the you know the lowest chakra money uh, your muladhara and then you are going all the way up to your crown chakra, which is number seven, right on the top of your head. So from Muldara to crown, that's the focus we do in chakra meditation, one to seven. Total, you may say, oh, there are, you know, um, mini chakras and it can go to 114. Uh, but forget about that, the main seven I'm talking about. When you do, initially, you may have no sensation. You may have no feeling. However, as you practice and you are able to recognize the energy of each chakra, now you are getting in touch with your body. You have to sit with a nice close, focus one chakra at a time, keep moving up, up, and you don't go from up to down, you go from down to up. The idea is the energy in the body should move from lower chakras to the top chakras. Why? The lower one is consumption, Upper ones are healing. Your spiritual journey will move to the next level. As you change your focus based on the physical location of the chakra, if you can feel a different sense of energy, it doesn't matter. Don't try to measure or think in terms of frequency, wavelength, or forget it. Just the feeling. And you will have different feeling in each chakra doesn't matter how different or what kind of feeling. Your feeling is your feeling unique to you. If you can feel it, that's the point. And with this kind of feeling, now you are getting in touch with your body. Once you have this feeling, if there is a change, you would know. And that's the important point. Why there would be a change? Body is telling you something. 
And now you will be able to pick that signal, pick that message, pick that indication much before you get anything in physical body. Now you can connect the dot and see, okay, what really changed? What happened in my life? What happened here? Does it make sense? Don't go over analyzing it. Or don't worry too much. However, understanding and connection is the key here. I'm not suggesting every small thing you start analyzing and then get stressed out. No. The point is learn either from the event or from the change of energy and then start connecting that, okay, when I do this, I feel this. When I do that, I feel this in my body. So you would know your body is telling you, buddy, I like this, I don't like that. So avoid doing what the body doesn't like and do what the body likes, simple. That's where we have to be. Don't get into too much chakra meditation, what to do, I will you know, manifest and all those kind of things. The simple thing is be human first. Be human means understand the capability of your body. First, understand and have a feel of that function. Self-awareness. That will improve your consciousness. That means it is improving your energy. Now, if you have done chakra or if you have done this, fine. If not, you may give it a try. You may feel it, do it. Now, there are two other things where really you can experiment, you know, talking to the universe or talking to the body. So first, let's say talking to the universe part. I'm just calling it angels. You can call whichever way you understand. But basically in the, you know, when we talk about soul plan or soul family, there is a soul family. That means there are masters who are not in the human incarnation. They are helping you. And that's where we say you can connect to the angels. Means you can connect to your soul family, soul masters. Some simple uh, mechanism or some process. And this, if you want to know that, I'm just sharing one with you. Again, don't make it a habit for every small thing. You start using this right? It's just a matter of understanding. Understanding means connect to the universe, connect to the message that comes in your life. So how can you do that? You can ask them a question. Any question that you have. Now you want an answer. That's why you're asking them. How would you get your answer? You have to give some options. Universe is not coming and talking to you like, hey, do this, do that, or this is good for you, or this is good for that. No. You'll get some indications, some hints, some messages through. It could be an image. It could be a, a friend talking about something or you may hear it on TV, radio, whatever. A book. So you should have a question and some answers, options. And then connect a symbol with every possible outcome. If you have three outcome, Connect three different symbols. One symbol for one outcome. And feel free to give them a deadline. That means I want this answer by such and such date. Don't make it that today, Sunday, 9 a.m. I'm telling you or when by 9.30 today itself I want an answer. No. This is not your pick up the cell phone and talk to a person kind of thing. Be reasonable. Otherwise you'll get frustrated and you'll say nothing happens. You cannot expect this like a SOS call. No. Again, this is not to get answers or, you know, lottery ticket number. This is not that process. So please don't take it that way. This is question of how you connect with yourself. So let's look into this. <laughs> what kind of questions or what, does, what do we mean when I say you can ask them any question? Suppose you are in a dilemma you are in a fix that should i change my job i, I like the other job but i mm, i'm not sure uh, whether you are changing because of your choice or you are not liking one of your colleague that's why you just want or you don't like your boss whatever the reason maybe it doesn't matter but you are not sure so you, there should be some options what could be the options one is yes as soon as possible 
other option could be no, continue as is, right? A third could be wait for some time. Now, these are not the only three possible. There could be none of the above. Why? There could be 10 other options which you have not captured in the first three. So one of the things that personally uh, I don't mind or like is none of the above so that it gives a chance that, hey, there is something else. So D becomes a kind of a standard option in all the questions you may ask. You can have any different combination, doesn't matter. There's no right or wrong. This is just as an example. Now you have to connect a symbol to each one of them. So say, say <clears throat> universe, if yes, as soon as possible is the answer, the symbol will be rose. If you say no, continue as a symbol is tadpole. If you want me to wait, say a symbol is an elephant and none of the above a boat. Now, when I say none of the above means I have to reword my question, means I have not asked the right option. That's all it means. What's happening? These symbols, I must be careful in selecting. Okay. So these symbols should not be something that you see every day. Like it's not like I have rose in my garden. As soon as I step out, I will see a rose. So don't give that kind of option. Then you are cheating, right? You think I want to see rose, I will give rose. The symbol should be something that is not common for you to see. You live where there is a marina, there is, you know, everybody has a boat, then obviously you will see a boat. Pick something that you usually do not see. Otherwise, you will just get something randomly and you will say, yeah, I got my answer. Now, what will happen? You might see the symbol. That means you may see a physical, a flower, a rose. Right? It could be real or animated. That means you may see a real flower or it could be animated. Animated means TV or whatever. It could be in a book you are reading and you see the image of a rose or description or author or some character talking about rose. Or you might hear someone talking about it means again radio news tv or your friends colleagues whosoever so it can come to you in any form or shape doesn't matter if your suppose example was rose and all of a sudden out of nowhere somebody is talking about rose or you see somebody carrying you know bouquet of rose that's how the answer comes to you and now you give them a deadline so you know, day and time is okay, but don't give in next two hours, I want my answer. That's not the kind of communication you want with the universe or yourself or soul. So if you see the symbol before the deadline, that's the answer. Now, if you see a symbol, but after the deadline, it doesn't count. You may ask again, if you see more than one symbol, it could be up to you to decide. Again, you can clarify, you can go in a different way. You may not see anything, you may see a lot later. So different possibilities are there. But be open. You may be listening to a podcast, you may be watching a cartoon, something with kids or whatever, and all of a sudden they talk about it. It could be movie, video games, anywhere. The important thing if you do this is, again, this is not a shortcut to get answers. This is to connect to your heart. Again, like the example we were talking about, should I change my job? We have lost touch with our own self. Our heart should tell you, is this right or wrong? So this example, take it as a fun, take it as, a, as an exercise to connect to your heart, to yourself. 
if you trust in soul family, yes, they are there to guide you, to help you. They are the masters. So when they communicate to you, you are just getting in touch with your soul family. So trust the process. Trust angels. It doesn't matter which form you believe they exist. Follow your inner self and be open-minded. But the most important thing, trust the process. Only do this if you trust. Otherwise, don't take it as you know mocking or making fun. As we said before, don't take too little time because then you are confusing yourself. Don't give obvious choices like, okay, I have a rose in my garden, I have picked this. And don't give ambiguous question. Give them very straightforward, yes, no kind of thing. And as I said before, don't make it a habit that every day morning before I do anything, I have to ask a question. Don't make it. This is not uh, a Jyotish shine. This is not, a, you know, uh, getting your future reading or any such thing. Don't go that route. And of course, thank. If you get your answer, thank to them at the end. You got your answer, whether you accept or not, up to you. Take time, no problem. But feel gratitude towards them. What does it mean? We are thanking the angels. We feel uh, great that they exist. Actually, you may do that way, but the whole point is you are getting connected to yourself. That's the point. So don't worry about the angels, masters, and the, the point is now you are connecting to yourself, which we are losing touch in our day-to-day -day life. I'll give you another way you can connect to yourself. This was angels and all. Now you are getting directly you with you. All you do is just make a ring. Use your thumb and index finger. Right? Just make a circle like this with both hands. And then connect it like a ring. Right? So it has to go inside. So like imagine this is a ring. Okay? And then this goes inside. So now it is locked. I'm pulling it. It's not coming out because it is locked. Of course, if you put all your energy, it will break open this other ring, right? And your ring and both hands will go separate. But just keep it like this. Okay? So both ring, they are interlocked. And then you just close your eyes. Ask your question to yourself. Should I do this? Yes, no. If yes, you will find the ring is not opening with gentle pressure. I'm talking not like you put your entire apple. If the answer is no, you will see that easily the ring will open. Your fingers will open and your hands will move apart. But if it is a strong yes, you will see I'm putting my gentle effort and it's not coming off. This is your body talking to yourself. Again, you know, this is simple way. Keep trying. Keep Again, don't make it a habit. Again, this is not future telling or all those things. But this will connect to yourself. The problem is you may get an answer you may not trust or believe. So if your question is, should I do this? An answer is coming. No, no, no. Now the answer is against your wish, kind of. Right? The brain says, or, you know, do this. Heart is saying, don't do this. Now that you have to deal with. If the answer is of your choice, you'll be very happy. Yes, I got my, you know, that's what you wanted to hear. But that's not the point. The point is, first, can you connect to your inner self? If you can connect to your inner self, these process will just help you connect. That's the point. Coming out of the noise, the digital world, chattering and all kind of thing. So masters, now we'll take your question answers. 